Welcome back to this class. Today we will be talking about one of the very very popular posture analysis tool or assessment tool that is RULA. Whenever we know about ergonomics, many of us first remember this tool by name, it is RULA. What is the full form? Full form is rapid upper limb assessment. Okay. Although we know this tool very uh, commonly and we keep on using it uh, you know, uh, very frequently in any kind of posture assessment tool, but this is very important for us to know the detailed technique and what are the way how we can use this tool. These are the things need to be known. So, therefore, we are included, we included this particular tool in this classroom. So, let us understand the history of it or what is the uh, kind of background it has. In earlier class, we came to know that was OWAS, OVACU Working Posture Analysis, that was the first posture assessment technique or posture assessment tool. RULA is kind of its you know, second step, okay, next step, not second step, it is a next step, right. So, it was developed in 1993, OAS was developed in 1970 and this is developed in 1993. It was developed by Mac Athamni and Corlett. You can see if you uh, if you go to the different search engine, you will come to know this uh, paper is very much easily available, the full publication very much easily available. It is published in uh, Applied Ergonomics Journal. Okay. So, uh, this particular method uh, was developed by Macatomni and Corlett and it is a survey method for ergonomics investigation. It has been described it as survey method for ergonomics assess investigation. It provides the rating of the musculoskeletal loads in the task where people have a risk of neck and upper limb loading. I mentioned in my previous class that ruler is always applicable when someone is sitting on a particular table chair arrangement and doing some job using mainly the upper limbs, right. So, this particular uh, tool will help us to understand the musculoskeletal load for a particular task in case of neck and upper limb. Also, it will give us some direction about the trunk. It is a rating of posture, force and movement required while performing the task. So, in earlier tool we have seen the posture was more important, the gross posture, right? Trunk like back, then limb, upper limb, arm and the legs. These were the gross posture. Here we have more detailing, we have more detailing about the upper limb, we have more detailing about the neck, neck values, trunk values, etc. So, ruler assessment can be performed on the workers in seated or standing without moving about. Now, here cons concern is if somebody is evenly seated uh, or a person is standing only upper limb is associated with some kind of activity then we can use. However, it is always suggested that if someone is sitting and doing particular job then only RILA is more applicable. So, where what are the applications of RULA? Musculoskeletal risk can be measured in terms of posture as part of a broader ergonomics investigation. Musculoskeletal load on the present and the modified workstation design can be compared. So, if you have uh, some target of doing some kind of workstation modification which is going to impact the whole body posture, in that case you can have comparison using ruler before and after. 
outcomes like productivity or uh, suitability of equipment can also be evaluated and workers can be educated about the musculoskeletal risk which created by different working posture. So, you can easily uh, educate them by showing some kind of you know awkward posture and their rating and a good posture with their rating and you can explain how uh, the awkward posture is going to create the musculoskeletal load on the body ok. So, this way you can use RULA and you can have research studies using RULA. Now, what is the procedure? Procedure is very very similar as we did in WAS. First what you have to do? You have to observe the whole activities, the set of activities, which activities, which task you are going to select it based on two major decision that is the frequently occupied posture and the posture which the worker is holding for longer hours in the whole shift right. So, first is your observation and then select the posture that you are going to assess. So, selecting the posture and the associated task. Then using that particular photograph or using that particular figure what you have to do? You have to score that posture. Once you do the scoring system that the scoring system we are going to learn in detail what you will do? We will see the action level and based on the action level we are going to take measures. So, we are going to take the decision that where we should start our intervention program. So, mostly it happens that whenever we look at the higher grand score, we call the grand score the ultimate value of the ruler, we call it as grand score. Once we receive that grand score, what we will do? We will compare with the action level chart and if we see it is very high and it is it is suggesting that you need some kind of changes, then what will happen? We will go for the intervention and that intervention initiation point also we can look back the individual posture score and from there also we can get some direction the where the intervention can be possible. Now, let us understand in detail. A total 15 steps involved in the assessment process. It can be divided into two major section that is section A and section B and section A deals with the arm and wrist analysis, section B deals with the neck, trunk and leg analysis ok. As I mentioned this ruler is mostly upper limb assessment or analysis right. So, that is why wrist, arm these analysis are very important and it is being taken care in the section A and the neck, trunk or back and the uh, legs that portion is taken care in the next part. We have three pre-computed table in this particular tool and we are going to understand what these uh, tables are and how do we use these tables. So, in section A where we are going to analyze the arm and wrist, what we have to understand? We have to locate the upper arm position, we have to locate the lower arm position, wrist position, we have to understand what is the wrist twist. Once these three, these four portions are you know is being observed and marked what we have to do? We have to put it in the table A. Once we get some score in table A, we have to understand the muscle use score and the this is not as it is add ok. This is add ok and force load score and from there you have to go to the table C. 
for the next part that is the section B trunk, neck and leg. First you have to locate the neck posture, trunk posture and leg posture. Once we have these three components you have to find the posture score from table B. Again as similar in the previous table you have to add the muscle use score and force load score and from there you have to get the value in table C. Fine. So, let us go for each table, each body parts separately. First, we are talking about this is just an example. You can have your own posture or you can take own example okay, for more understanding. Now, this is for your upper arm. What this upper arm position says? What is the definition of your upper arm? From shoulder till your elbow. Okay. So, from shoulder till your elbow, this portion. Okay. So, if upper arm is moving forward 20 degree and moving backward 20 degree, then score value is plus 1. If upper arm is moving forward from 20 degree to 45 degree, then plus 2. Anything beyond 20 degree, it is plus 2. Now, you have to understand similarly as I discussed in was few postures hypothetically although is possible to hold, but in industry such working posture is not possible. So, in case of that second option that is the you know extension more than 20 degree, it is really difficult for someone to work in that particular situation or particular posture. Hypothetically only we can adapt such posture. So, beyond 20 degree we cannot have any kind of upper arm posture in working posture or working condition. So, we are not going to consider further the extension portion. Okay? We are going to only go for flexion forward direction. Okay? So, 20 to 45 degree is plus 2, 45 to 90 degree that is plus 3 and if it is beyond shoulder level then it is plus 4. Okay? So, we have 4 rating one is 0 to 20 degree forward or backward direction that is plus 1, 20 to 45 degree forward plus 2, anything beyond 20 degree in the backward direction plus 2, 45 to 90 degree plus 3 and beyond 90 degree that is the above shoulder level that is plus 4. Now, this is only the initial numbering, initial scoring. Apart from that also we have something to more, uh, something more to add. Once this primary posture is being scored, we have to look for some kind of more adjustment. What it is? If your shoulder is raised, okay, the shoulder is in relaxed condition. If it is raised on any side, whatever side you are actually analyzing, you have to add 1. Okay? So, if you are raising, raising your shoulder, that means you are putting extra load on your musculoskeletal system. So, if you are raising your shoulder, then in that particular posture, you add 1. Suppose your original score is 2, then if you look after the adjustment of your shoulder point, it becomes 2 plus 1, 3. Also, you have to understand if upper arm is abducted. Abducted means away from your body. So, if you are working in uh, some condition where your upper arm is going away from your body, then you have to also again add one more value. So, you look for shoulder raised or not, you look for your upper arm is abducted or not. Okay, that is plus 1 in both cases. Whereas, 
if you look at the posture and find that your upper arm is supported with some kind of hand rest then of course you are giving some relaxation you are helping the person to hold that particular posture in more comfortable way so you have to subtract one so here you have to be very very careful if your hand is hanging and you are doing the job without arm rest then no change if you have some hand rest okay arm rest then you have to subtract one from the main value for example suppose you have uh, original score plus 2 you have some shoulder raised posture so 2 plus 1 3 also the posture is abducted then it is one more addition that is 3 plus 1 4 also you see that there is some resting for your arm arm right there is some arm rest then subtract one so four minus one three okay so th therefore the final score became three so this way we calculate upper arm score right so uh, depending on the position of your upper arm you calculate the upper arm score in the beginning and then you do the adjustment has the shoulder raised or not upper arm is abducted or not and there is any support uh, for your arm or not now let's go for the next part of its assessment that is the lower arm so you have to locate the lower arm and you have to give the scoring now here lower arm position is associated with your upper arm okay so the kind of reference point that we will be taking for lower arm that will be the up position of your upper arm in this figure you can see if this this particular figure it says if your lower arm position is moving uh, 60 degree to 90 degree then it is plus one because if you look you you know if you adapt this particular posture you will find this is the most comfortable posture for your lower arm so this is one if it is beyond that 100 degree then it is two or lower than uh, from 60 degree to zero degree then it is two any one of these so if you are hanging your hand for longer period then it is really tough right because all the shoulder uh, load will come on this particular portion so that is two and once you have one or two then comes the adjustment what adjustment adjustment is if you are working on the body midline like you know your job is just in front of your body uh, so what will happen for both the arms you do not need to stress any parts extra right you are working on the at the body midline then then no problem but if one, any one of the hand is crossing the body midline like this is your body midline if you are working not at this particular point you are working here or working here for that particular arm or for that particular lower arm what you have to do you have to give us you know additional score that is the plus one so for this particular uh, example okay so what is happening you can see the the person is working on the you know um, more than 100 degree position so that is that's why initial score is plus two however he is working on the modem you know just in front of his body like you know he is working on the midline he is not crossing any body midline so there is no adjustment if the person is doing something on the left side or right side any anything in any degree okay so here is no difference between the 10 degree def, uh, deviation or 20 degree deviation but all the cases if there is a deviation it will add one so that way we calculate the lower arm uh, score now this is done for lower arm 
the next comes to the you uh, know um, wrist position what is your wrist here only two options uh, three options are there what it says if it is just like this ok so there is no deviation no no deflection not flexion not extension nothing then it is 1 so 0 degree at this 0 degree if your wrist is position then it is plus 1 if it is moving in both direction extension or flexion at 15 degree 15 degree upward 15 degree downward if that is available then it is plus 2 if it is anything beyond 15 degree either direction forward uh, no upward direction or downward direction then it is 3 so you can understand this value right now for this particular position you can see the wrist score may come as 3 the next part of wrist is wrist is twisted or not ok so wrist is twisted or not this this way it is twisted or not so if wrist is twisted in the mid range then it is plus 1 if it is uh, no wrist is twisted at or near the end range little bit or more than that so now this case it is not any degree measurement so it's like you know based on the range of motion understanding of uh, of the observer you have to decide so it comes with some kind of experience expertise opinion and also so that now here i would like to mention very important point this ruler that rapid upper limb assessment okay it's just gives a, an understanding that is there any musculoskeletal load are there or not if it is there it is at what level now concern is if i find uh, while doing the experiment while doing my data collection that i have some confusion between what exact this degree is is it 15 degree or 16 degree suppose i am talking about this particular position is it 15 degree or 16 degree because you know it is based from your photography there can be some error in the photography and if you look at uh, the kind of data collection we have to do with the human and at the working condition it becomes really difficult to get very accurate photograph right. We always try to do uh, always being a researcher there is an aim that I should collect my data uh, very correctly however there is always a chance for such cases that we have some confusion between that is this 10 degree or it is 15 degree or it is 15 degree or 16 degree some some sometimes it comes now concern is if you have any such situation of course you can take two three opinion so from experts from your peer you can take opinion also you you to avoid because it's a risk assessment so to assay, assess the risk you can go for, you should go for the higher level of risk so that you are not neglecting any kind of risk so if you have a confusion this particular position suppose it's 14 degree or 16 degree then suggestion is you consider you consider 16 degree not 14 degree because if you consider 14 degree then if it is 16 then you are actually neglecting the risk but if you are considered in 16 then maybe the result is little exaggerated but you are not neglecting any kind of risk okay so that way it's it's uh, for ruler for reba for all these type of assessment you should go always uh, whenever you are assessing the risk you go for the higher value of it fine so you understood that how we are collecting uh, the wrist position and wrist twist position so for this particular for this particular figure this is the kind of position Mm, we we are we have calculated and this is just for our example 
Now let us understand if we have these numbers how do we read this particular table because this particular table will help us to get the first score from the uh, section A. Okay. So, our in this particular example our upper arm score was first 2. So, you are actually located in this particular block. You need not to see uh, this portion, this portion, this, nothing. So, you have your, your you know, uh, vision will be here only, okay, because your upper arm score is 2. Now, once you have upper arm score, then you go for lower arm. What was our lower arm score? It was 2. Now, again from this 1, 2, 3, our lower arm score was 2. So, again I checked this is my area where I should look for. After lower arm, I should check the wrist score. Our wrist score was 2 plus 1 that was 3. Now, if it is 3, then this is the only region where I should check, right? Okay. Now, once we know the wrist score, we, we, we have only now two value from the wrist twist score, we confirm yes, my score is 3. So, for this particular example, we have the score value. Uh, for from the section A that is 3 for this example. Now, using this, this is a standard table. It is available from the original um, publication as well as from this also you can copy this from, this is a pre-computed table, right? So, from this table you can get your score A. Now, this what will happen gives the upper arm and wrist score from the table A as we got 3. Now, what we will do with this score 3? Now, we have to do some kind of adjustment uh, with uh, in the you know, when we are talking about muscle use because you your uh, you know, upper arm is uh, lower arm these parts are working. So, you have to add the muscle use score and you have to load or force score. So, what will happen? For this particular example, so here is the explanation of muscle use score. If the posture is mainly static or if any, you know, if actions repeated occurs 4 times uh, per minute, then it is plus 1. For force and load score, if uh, the load is, you know, 4.4 uh, pound less than that then it is plus 1 you can convert it into kg uh, if load is 4.42 to 22 pound plus 1 4. Point, if it is intermittent same load if it is intermittent then it is plus 1 but if it is static or repeated then plus 2 and if anything more than 22 pound and repeated or sudden jerk, sudden shock, then it is like, you know, in case of, you know, uh, some kind of vibrating instrument, drilling machines and for those cases, okay. So, it is plus 3. So, once you have your uh, score A, that is the, from the section A, you got a score and then you add muscle use score and load or force score. So, for this particular example, our muscle use score was kind of 0 because there is nothing. So, posture was not stat, uh, is, is not static. They were doing a you know, lot of movement. So, it is not static and action is not repeated, uh, repeatedly occurs 4 times per minute. So, that was also not there. That is why it was 0. So, it is 0 and uh, force use it was very easy job so less than uh, you know uh, this 4.4 4 to 22 pound and it was intermittent can because you can see this is a box right they are uh, taking it putting it aside maybe taking it packing it putting it aside so it was not that heavy job so that was that's why it was only uh, one so our earlier score was three we are adding 
0 for muscle use and we are adding 1 for force and load. Then the final score become 4. Okay. This is for your limb, upper limb. So, upper arm, lower arm, wrist and wrist twist. For, for that, we got a final score as 4. Now, let us go for the next body part which is your neck, trunk and leg. Okay. Now, let us go for this particular portion that is the neck, neck location. How do you do that neck? So, when you are you know sitting on a particular position, you are looking on the uh, forward direction, only movement in the forward direction, okay, that to 0 to 10 degree. If it is 0 to 10 degree, then it is plus 1. 10 to 20 degree in forward direction, it is plus 2. More than 20 degree in forward direction, that is in the flexion position, then plus 3. And here it is very important, any activity in extension mode, okay? Any activity in the extension mode for your neck, it is plus 4 because this is a very dangerous working posture. You can do it for your exercises or many other small laser activity or something, but you cannot hold this particular posture in extended this particular neck extension posture in industrial situation. You cannot do any kind of activity, right? So, if that is available, that means that posture is extremely bad, okay. So, that is why it is plus 4. So, any posture in the extension position of your neck, it is plus 4. So, it is in getting highest value. Similarly, what we did for your um, upper arm, lower arm, some kind of ex extra adjustment with the basic scoring for neck also we have some kind of extra adjustment. What it is? If neck is twisted, twisted we will say this position, this, this movement, okay. Anything this movement if it is there, suppose you your neck is bended towards you know 0 to 10 degree and you are working in this position, okay. So, then it is forward that is plus 1 and twisted either on left side or right side, then it is one more plus. Along with that, you need to see this is twisting, this is twisting, the next portion is bending, this is side bending, okay. So, if any side bending is there, then it is plus one. So, any one of the condition if exist, then it is plus one. For this particular Example, neck score is 2, the basic score is 2, you can see, you can measure, it is you know, 10 to, you know, from this you can measure, it is around 10 to 20 degree uh, kind of position. So, that is why it is 2, however, he is working just in front of his uh, body midline, so the neck neither twisted nor bend okay so there is no more addition the first that is why the score remains 2 if something is there so whenever you are working away from your body so if you are away from your midline body midline then only this uh, twisting and bending portion will come into picture now let's go for trunk very similar if you are straight you are working, you, there is no forward movement or backward movement, then it is plus 1. If 0 to 20 degree forward movement, then it is plus 2. If it is 20 to 60 degree, then plus 3. And if it is more than 60 degree, so you are actually uh, bending a lot from your uh, lower back, okay. So, then it is plus 4. However, there is no posture which is available in industrial condition or working condition which is in trunk extension. So, there is no such scoring available. 
okay so uh, and also we should give similar kind of adjustment that is trunk is twisted that means you are moving towards this direction then plus 1 if it is you know bending in this direction then it is plus 2 uh, one more plus 1 okay that is the kind of adjustment you have to do so for this particular example we found that the trunk is you know bent towards uh, you know forward direction it's very light bending but not straight towards uh, towards the disc there is a bending so zero within 0 to 20 degree that is why plus 2 and as i mentioned earlier this particular person working just in front of his body so there is no crossing of your body midline so no as uh, no adjustment for this and this so no value so 0 0 okay so trunk score remain 2 now coming to the leg here it is not in detail only if you need to see the legs or feet are supported or not if supported then only plus one if not supported then plus two so there is no more detailing okay for legs you have to only see if it is supported then it is comfortable so it is plus one if not supported then plus two so that's all for the scoring of your neck trunk and uh, leg now let's see how do we read the next table very similar as we did for upper arm so here it was your neck posture it was two so you have a kind of you know system where you, you are here this particular zone is fixed for you now you have uh, after neck you have trunk so in trunk you have one two three four five six some uh, this type of uh, no uh, scoring system so in that your score was two so again you are you know uh, in this particular zone two and three now you had a leg score which is one so your final score score became two similarly uh, what we did for um, uh, the from this section A for section B also we have to do some kind of adjustment that is the muscle use score similar definition so you need not to relearn it it is a similar thing so for this particular example we see the posture uh, muscle use score is actually zero for this particular example and for the uh, load on force score it comes around one so our score was two so two plus zero plus one it become three so earlier from this we have four and now we have three okay see these are the two scores we got now we will derive the grand score how do we derive grand score so this is uh, this particular table is called table c and uh, so from this we have four and this we have three so we have to go go so this is this is the location and then this is the location so we have three we have three right so we got the final value as three now let us see what is the action label what this three means because ultimately once we get the grand score we have to tell what this grand score means now there are some action label this is the portion where you can interpret your final score and this is the whole worksheet together this helps you in data collection in this example i 
you know compile everything in one sheet and from here you can do your data collection. Now as our ruler score is ruler score or we can say grand score is 3 then we have to see where it is lying. So 1 to 2 it says acceptable posture. So if your posture if your ruler grand score becomes uh, like within 1 to 2 so either 1 or 2 then you say that yes this particular working posture is acceptable you you can work with this particular posture at least for the whole work shift okay the next is the next range is 3 to 4 what it says yes it is kind of you uh, know concerns are there you need to investigate but it is not that urgent yes there are some possibilities that if you continue working maybe you will get trouble however it is not that bad okay so the uh, the language is further investigation changes may be needed now the next step is 5 to 6 here you can see next step is 5 to 6 further investigation and changes required soon and if it is more than that it's it's 7 and more than 7 then investigate and implement the changes immediately because if you do not uh, take immediate action you will have some kind of bigger trouble so that is why this is the dangerous or it is quite risky now we got the value we understood how the ruler score can be interpreted. Now let us go into more detail about once we interpret the grand score how do we start our intervention. We have to take a decision right that I need to do changes. I realized being a researcher, being the observer of this particular work posture that yes, this particular posture is not good, is, is awkward and uh, the risk level for musculoskeletal disorder from the posture point of view, it is risky, fine. Now I need to start my intervention, I need to see how do I uh, change it, how do I take it to the lower level. Re, uh, lower level of risk how do I start what we need to do is we need to relook the individual scoring okay how do I do that we have individual scoring for upper arm for lower arm for wrist uh, neck trunk we have all these individual uh, scoring we need to see because of which body part or which scoring this final value has gone on the up, upper side okay uh, has gone in the extreme side or on the um, higher value okay if we understand that then we need to re, uh, we need to check in the workstation or workplace that what are the components what are the workstation elements or design elements available which is causing to hold that particular posture of that particular body part okay it's not that whole, everything is responsible maybe some component is responsible so we need to identify that if we can identify that then there is very direct uh, you know initiation point like you have very uh, specific point where you can start your intervention so ruler score will not only gives you an understanding the what is the level of risk it also helps you to start or it, uh, to get the direction from where you start your design changes or design modification okay modification in the product level maybe positioning maybe the orientation many other aspects so it's absolutely based on your case to case okay so it keep on changing the decisions will keep on changing it may happen that lower arm uh, is the uh, only body part uh, or only component which is causing the uh, higher value of this ruler score 
However, you, once you are looking at the workstation, you, you realize that there is very less chance to change that due to work demand. Now, being an ergonomist, you cannot, uh, cannot force the management or the, uh, the whole system that you need to change it. It is not possible. If only possible, because you, without compromising the productivity, if it is possible, then you do the changes. But if in any case there is a possibility, you know, uh, it is not possible to change that particular portion, then you have to relook into the other body parts so that how can we re, uh, you know, rework and take that final grand score on the uh, towards uh, you know, lower risk region. So, it is not always whichever is uh, know, uh, giving more impact we will start with that maybe in the uh, working condition maybe the work demand is such that we have less freedom to work. So, that is th that is where we have the challenges and designers always take up those challenges and you know uh, do lot of design modification and they come up with uh, you know changes in the whole uh, workstation or changes in the uh, position layout orientation and everything ok. So, that is how we use ruler. Now, let us understand. So, this is the kind of you know uh, action level in more detail. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier also 1 to 2 is the negligible risk, 3 to 4 is low risk, uh, 5 to 6 is medium risk and more than 6 or near 7 these all are very high risk and it needs implementation immediately. So, let us understand the advantages of this particular tool. So, relation between the score and regional pain can be demonstrated. Suppose from an initial survey you have an idea that yes uh, the prevalence point prevalence or weekly prevalence is neck neck has neck pain has these type of symptoms so they they are showing and from the postural analysis also you see that neck is the major contributory factor to have the higher risk value so you can easily correlate them so the relation you can establish Outcomes like productivity and suitability of the equipment can be evaluated because if the posture is not uh, optimum then it is definitely going to affect the productivity of the whole system, suitability of the whole system. So, you can really evaluate the system based on these uh, no, whole analysis. So, workers can be educated regarding high risk posture. So, if you can explain them, if you can show them these data, definitely they will be able to understand how should they correct their working posture, how do they maintain the good working posture habit. Comparison can be made between the pre and post intervention, it is very easy. So, if you have a uh, grand score value of 7 or 6 and then uh, after intervention it is 5, you can easily say how it has been improved, right? And it is very quick and easy. So, these are the kind of advantages. However, there are some disadvantages. So, this task with whole body involvement cannot be assessed. It is only some you know your uh, upper arm, lower arm. So, upper limb, neck, trunk and leg. So, leg also has very uh, limited uh, contribution. Organization and psychological factors are not in con uh, consideration. Only the physical position is in consideration. Capturing the, uh, this spelling is wrong, uh, considering the right photograph may be difficult because you know in, in working condition, uh, working environment, it is, uh, it is like you know uh, getting the correct photograph, it is very difficult. So, and if the photograph is not 
really correct if there is some parallax error so you will not be able to assess the proper degree of movement then it it is uh, it is going to give some kind of wrong interpretation of the posture so uh, collecting data uh, uh, like collecting the proper photography is very very important in this case several ruler assessment may be required for one task of course uh, for a whole job for a whole task it's not that only single posture is being adapted it is uh, it may require four five seven eight i uh, depending on the complexity of the task lot of lot many postures so each postures need to be um, assessed separately using ruler and have to choose the most extreme posture because that gives you an understanding how dangerous the whole job is so if you if you can address the maximum risk of course the other risk also will be taken care so but at what level we may not understand from this ruler so these are the disadvantages of this particular tool it's very very easy uh, I believe uh, during the course, uh, during this class only, if you would have tried, you would have learned this particular tool. So, it is very, very easy tool. So, Lula was developed to require the minimum training because very less training is required. Only if you understand the movements, understand the body position, you can easily get the scoring. So, new users are suggested to practice using photographs and video uh, videotapes of posture before using this actual tool and 1 to 2 hours is required to familiarize with the tables and the method. I think um, less than that also is easy. Okay, So, you can have uh, tables understanding is not that very critical. You can easily uh, you know, adapt the situation in you can continue with the final scoring. So, you need only pen, uh, a videography system or uh, photography system and the main ruler sheet where you have the description of all the parts and the uh, all these pre-computed tables. Okay? So, these are only the requirements. So, anybody uh, can use this particular tool with minimum these understanding and they can identify or they can assess the kind of uh, risk for the development of musculoskeletal disorders from the posture point of view. Here again I would like to mention posture is not only the uh, factor which affects musculoskeletal disorder, very awkward posture if it happens once in a whole shift may not be that dangerous than some you know, less uh, awkward posture which is continuing for longer hours can cause more damage. So, always posture is associated with the duration of exposure. So, posture may not be uh, only the individual factor which is causing or which is the causal factor of the musculoskeletal disorder. So, along with uh, RULA assessment, RULA uh, score, you should look for the duration of total exposure. Okay? So, you must have learned this tool very well and it is very, very easy. So, I suggest just you pick up your camera, you have mobile phone, you take any working posture uh, which is you know you can see around and you practice at least one or two photograph analysis, you will learn the tool. If you still, if you have some doubt, we can discuss it in the discussion section. So, next we will be talking about REBA rapid upper, uh, entire body assessment in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.